A secret, if you watch one of the trailers, keep an eye on this one. Mugman, he actually gets a little bit bigger. He's just chunky. He's like 30% bigger than Cuphead. And uh, we recorded the trailer footage. We realized we had created Thick Mugman. Hi, I'm Jared Moldenhauer, the lead game design for Studio MDHR. And I'm here to take you on a journey through King Dice, Dice Palace. It's all the little nuances, it's little brief details, it's how we finally got to the end package. It's a mix of insight, it's got Game Pro pro tips, it has it all, so I hope you enjoy. So this is it. This is our homage to Gunstar Heroes and the Dice Palace. This is a earlier stage where it's a very plain, like it's just kind of a straight line path, whereas the Gunstar Heroes was a vertical. Now I don't remember perfectly, but I remember it swings back. That's probably one more swing than it needed to be. This was the beginning of being like, it's on a gambling table, it's at the casino. So what we got here is kind of like really early stages, a little bit more experimental with how could you view the player, like change a camera, which was kind of silly, like switch it to more of a top down. But the, the, the look of like King Dice so far down, like just so minute being like almost unnoticeable, like completely unnoticeable, we just kind of kept pursuing a little bit more. So this is some um, production art from the Tipsy Troop. All of this side is potential death animations. So what we always do is end up trying to feel out what's the most unique or what stays with their personalities more. And knowing that we want them to stay on the screen during the fight, during their uh, death animations, uh, something like shattering is just a no and a no. There's something that we just realized is a error. This bouncing shot disappearing on their hitbox is not intended. Every other shot in the game passes through and allows you to hit the final guy, but thanks to uh, GameSpot professionals. You can look forward to this in an update patch 1.2b. Uh, this is just a overall good example of like how much we try to explore uh, facial expressions. Like this is more of like kind of a sad and then you got your mad over here. Uh, this is, I don't even know what you want to call it. The more angles you approach in the design of the character, sometimes you get surprised and it switches the, the entirety of how they feel. Hoppus Pocus is kind of a, a creepy little magician. This death animation, his tie is kind of choking him. Now, this isn't the inspiration, but I like to pretend it is. There was this one time, uh, my brother in elementary school, one of our friends had just got his nice new scarf on and was going home. And he decided like, let's yank on each side. It wasn't me, it wasn't me, I'm, I'm free of this one. And it ended up like tightening the knot so much that it couldn't be undone. So this sort of represents the time where my brother nearly murdered a child. But, because he's a good, kind man, he was the one who also ran to get a pair of scissors to cut that scarf off. That's probably not usable, and he won't like it. <laughs> So what we got here is Mr. Wheezy. The ideas that we kind of wanted to do was make sure we got gambling themed, but then also what else themes well with casinos. The booze and the cigarettes and the like smoky atmosphere. There's the Tipsy Trio, and as well we have our giant cigar character. This was Death Concepts. Like, what is the KO screen gonna be? But this whole concept, this idea that like maybe he could just kind of burn and be reduced to ashes, uh, actually ended up how he travels from the side of the screen. Yeah. 
once a concept is complete, we have the characters of Pip and Dot done. Like, we go through a quick thumbnails. We know what the attack's sort of gonna be, but we want to let the artists explore a little bit more. As you're creating or trying to find something, you also gotta get, like, the half-baked ideas out there or anything. The, the least explored and actually in the game was belly mouth. There was just something about it that had that 30s nightmarish catch you off guard. Like it's, it's something just a little bit outside of your expectation. This has kind of a funny death animation. Yes, that, that keyframe is just lovely. I think a lot of people miss these kind of little small details and nuances because you've just achieved it, you've just finally defeated the boss and your brain kind of shuts off. It's kind of nice to sometimes like go back and see these odd nuances within the game. Here's one of the pages, one of the many pages of uh, Pure Oletta. The original sketches kind of had a more square top on the holder and we knew we wanted a boss that is a large rectangle, essentially. Uh, a secret, if you watch one of the trailers, this platform. Mugman, when he lands on it, he actually gets a little bit bigger. We refer to it as like thick Mugman. He's just chunky. He's like 30% bigger than Cuphead. It had to do with just, uh, it's within Unity. The way we had reacting to some of the boundary systems is you, if we, you just stretched them manually, then anything that was uh, interacting with it would also follow that exact same stretch. So at some point, probably me, screwed this up and uh, we recorded the trailer footage, but thank God we did because within that trailer footage and early footage of looking at it, we realized we had created Thick Mugman. So what we have here is an homage within the homage. So the Gunstar Heroes Dice Palace, this part in Gunstar Heroes for some reason stuck with both of us. We were like, how can we pull that into our game? And we wanted to do an homage, but never be overtly one thing. We didn't want somebody playing Cuphead and taken out of the universe going, this is from that game. So everything that we kind of try to achieve is very subtle. Like you almost have to look for it or want to look for it. We sort of wanted Cuphead to be a love letter to all retro gaming, but some stages like uh, the junkyard or this uh, arcade, the claw picker? I don't even know what you call those machines. The claw pick games, what you got here is a monkey and a wolf and over in the corner is a lizard so this is a uh, kind of our homage to rampage it's basically george lizzie and ralph every boss in the game there's gonna be somewhere between like two to six things that's kind of a nod to something that we grew up with and we we loved so we thought why not pay it an homage in a way without being a direct ripoff. Here it is, our final surprise, our final meme. You got to the finish line. Who knows what's gonna happen next? You're celebrating, you put the controller down, and before you know, you look back up, and the screen is full of cards. There's nowhere left to go. By the time you get your bounds, you've probably lost that round, you've probably cursed us out. Maybe I'm partially sorry about that. It's so amazing in the end to like finally see your game played. Like launching it was amazing, but there's something about being like so burnt out. Your brain's just kind of like, I need to reset. I need a month or six. It's the like the streaming and the speedrunners and the stuff that really kind of brought back that joy too. Like it's almost on par with the feeling of launching the game. It, it, it's just a beautiful thing to be a part of this entire community. Uh, we're really grateful and I don't think we could change a single thing about the way we approached it, the way it was done, and we're just happy you guys liked it. Thanks!